Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with an absolutely unbelievable opportunity because I have been given the opportunity to check out the Jurassic Justin slash Caldera Collectibles 118th scale Allosaurus here. I've been given a little bit of kind of like a sneak peek here to take a look at this and show you guys how incredible this figure truly is and, you know, having it here in hand and having a chance to actually look at it man this thing is unbelievable but one thing i do want to state before we go any further with the review i know there were uh some people that were you know making a lot of fuss about the fact that this was releasing roughly around the same time that the hammond collection version uh well it actually was unveiled a little ways back but the sale for this went up the day after the hammond collection version was revealed now i do want to state that people are making some pretty inconsiderate comments about the fact that this is a $300 figure. Now, uh, again, they make the comment of, well, Mattel's is this price. Why would Jurassic Justin's be so much more? Well, we have to look at this from the standpoint of the fact that this is one individual creator, one individual artist that sculpts these figures. He paints these figures. He prints these figures. Like, everything that happens with these figures is all done by one guy. That is a massive amount of work for one person to put in. It's a massive amount of money and time that has to go into creating these figures. So... Obviously, this is going to draw in a much higher price tag just to be able to create these figures and for Jurassic Justin to at least get a little bit as far as, uh, you know, some monetary gain off of these so that he can put it toward the production of future figures, which is exactly what he's doing. But the Mattel version is created by a massive amount of people and then sent to a factory and painted... Uh, you know, obviously it's not going to be nearly as nice as what we see here at a factory and everything. So, like, there's a huge difference. Obviously, Mattel can charge a way different price compared to what an individual artist can. And, like I said, this thing is actually huge. Considering it is 118th scale, it is a gigantic version of an Allosaurus. So... You know, on top of the fact that it's already a completely built from scratch custom figure, it's also huge. So I really wanted to point that out. But also the fact that this Allosaurus, you know, anybody that was talking about purchasing one or is interested in purchasing one, I do have a suggestion and it's how I purchase a lot of my larger figures. I often get people stating, wow, you must be rich because you buy so many really expensive figures. Not really the case. I'm actually not rich at all. And uh, one of the ways, whenever it comes to a larger purchase that I don't have the money for at that time that I acquire them are through a few different ways. You can do a PayPal pay in four. If you have PayPal, they allow you to actually purchase purchase stuff online and split the payments up to four different payments and that makes it so much easier to buy more expensive stuff so you don't have to pay so much money in one shot but I also use a firm which is really cool because you could take like a super expensive product buy it and then make like a small amount of payments or a large amount of payments so that you can lower the cost of it per month and that allows you again to purchase stuff like this. It's something that I've never really talked about here on my channel so I did want to kind of tell you guys about that just so you know that that's something that's possible. Again for anybody interested in purchasing this or any other you know higher priced product you know if you want to do that those are some options to help you acquire those things. But anyway this Allosaurus has been standing here staring at me menacingly and I know that it wants to be reviewed and I know it wants a closer look so let's jump to it right now so starting up here at the head sculpt of our allosaurus you can see oh man it looks absolutely magnificent when it comes to creating the battle at big rock version or the chaos theory version of the allosaurus honestly it does not get better than that and this one here is exactly that it's the battle at big rock version of the allosaurus and you can see of course the allosaurus sculpt itself is absolute perfection but you can also see he's captured one of the most important aspects to that allosaurus or actually maybe even i should say two of the more important aspects one of which is the fact that it has some scars and stuff up here but the other is the blind eye and look at how good that blind eye looks the blind eye looks exactly as I would expect it to. It looks so legit, so realistic. He's done a phenomenal job 
when it comes to actually adding in the blind eye, which is something that, you know, it seems like the Allosaurus tends to get skipped on when it comes to at least Mattel's releases, consistently never has the blind eye except for one time on that kind of goofy version. It was like the Mega Roar or something like that version, but this one does in fact have it. Another thing that is incredibly impressive on top of the unbelievable sculpt we have here is the paintwork. Jurassic Justin's paintwork is so good, and you can see that he's added in a lot of variation of color. He's added all sorts of different painting techniques, whether it be washes or dry brushing, to really make the uh, paintwork on this look as professional and as high quality as possible, and also just generally super lifelike. You can see all sorts of variations to the colors here in the face. You've got lighter and darker shades of blues. You have blacks. You've got dark browns, light browns, all kinds of paintwork. I specifically love the way that he's dry brushed a lot of the detail out here in the face. He is definitely very good at what he does, and as I said, I don't think I've seen a better looking version of a Jurassic World Allosaurus anywhere, especially when it comes to a Battle at Big Rock version, and yes, I definitely think that this one here looks a lot nicer even than the upcoming Hammond Collection version, in my opinion. It just... It is absolutely breathtaking here in person. But as you lead through the course of the face, you can see the skin texture looks incredible. You have all sorts of variation to the sizes and shape of the scales. You can see the nostrils right there. You've, of course, got the Allosaurus crests up here. They, as well, sport some really nice fine detail to them. You also have some nice detail within the eye socket area. Again, you can see the coloration darkens in the eye socket. And then as you move to the top of the head, you have kind of like an armored sort of a look here moving along the back of the Allosaurus. And as you can see, as you lead down, it has not only that armored look but all sorts of kind of like ridges and stuff up here on the top which looks really really nice and I love the fact that he's allowed this light blue to kind of creep through the darker blues of a lot of the armored areas on the top it's very nicely done I also like the fact that he's painted the scars out those injuries on the face with a nice pinkish tone and again it is absolutely perfect as far as the paintwork goes as you can see the mouth does articulate it can actually go open uh, even so wide that it actually disconnects from the skin right there. But right there, again, would be like the perfect amount to open the mouth. And as you can see, you've got the skin kind of stretching here. Again, nicely painted with a pinkish tone. Also sports a nice gloss coat to it, which is a huge plus. On the inside of the mouth, we've got a really cool looking tongue. The tongue, first of all, has some fantastic texturing to it, but also sports two different variations of color as we've got like a purple, actually maybe even a little more. It kind of starts out with like a pinkish tone, then transitions to a purple, then kind of ends up as a dark blue, similar to the blue that uh, you see on the Allosaurus itself, but definitely a little bit darker, which again, I do believe the Allosaurus from Jurassic World does in fact have a bluish tongue. And then if we turn the Allosaurus around and take a look at the opposing side, not only will you see that again, it is gorgeous when it comes to both the sculpt and paint, you can also see that we now have a healthy eye as we've got a green with a black pupil and a perfect gloss coat over the eye making it shine very realistically. You can also see all of the teeth are sculpted really nicely. You've got all sorts of, of course, varying sizes to the teeth. Very much so menacing looking teeth on the Allosaurus as you move along through the course of the inside of the mouth and it's all painted with kind of like a light yellowish tone which looks really good as well the jaw closes about that far and the jaw opens pretty much about that far and it does seem as yes definitely the upper and lower jaw both articulate to open the mouth as you begin to move back into the neck you can see you've got a spot of articulation right here which can go left right and up and down, which is nice, definitely increasing the posability of the figure. As you continue to move down along the side of the neck, you can see nice skin wrinkles and folds, as well as extremely vibrant scale detail. And you can also see moving down here, again, you've got that nice brownish tone. And look at how good of a job Jurassic Justin has done as far as uh, the painting of this area and making sure all of those scales are highlighted perfectly. You can also see a few skin wrinkles down here on the underside of the throat, kind of close to the lower jaw right there. But as you continue to move down, you see kind of like a line of scoots following along the side of the neck as well. And then you've got another spot of articulation right here, which can go left, right, up, down. It is uh, wire articulation, so you can see how it 
if you actually move it all the way over, you can kind of get a sneak idea there, a sneak peek as far as how the articulation works. But you can move that neck around really nicely and again, pretty much pose it wherever you want and it stays perfectly. And if you look at it from up above, just to kind of give you another idea again as far as how articulated that neck is, give you a nice shot of it right there. And then again, you can move both parts to really articulate that neck. And as we move down here into the body, you can again see all sorts of varying sizes to the scales, even larger scales as you move down into the arm. You can also see the muscle definition is nicely present. The scales become a good bit smaller as you move closer toward the elbow. We do of course have articulation in the arm, so you can go forward and back. You can completely swivel it up and around if you would like to, but obviously you can also move the arm out away from the body. You also have articulation in the elbow, which works really smoothly, really nicely, as well as articulation in the wrist, which can go up and down and swivel. So you've got super smooth articulation the entire way through when it comes to the Allosaurus. But I'm sorry, I have to keep moving it kind of out of screen for a minute. I just have to readjust it again. It's a pretty darn big figure. But as you move down, you can see again the transition from the blue to the brown on the back of the elbow is also really smooth. You can see yet again how nicely he's highlighted all of those scales. Moving through as you lead down into the hand of the Allosaurus, it does have some nice scoots moving down the fingers. And then we lead out into the nails. The nails have a genuine sharp look to them. And they also are painted with a nice glossy black, which is a plus. You can also see he's applied a dry brushing of a darker tone. It looks like moving down, I think it's a dry brushing or a wash, down the course of those scoots to just alter the coloration a little bit because as you see the sides of the fingers, if my camera would focus, the sides of the fingers are a little bit of a brighter blue. But as we move back up into the stomach and the side of the dinosaur, you continue to see how incredible that sculpt is. As you move up, you've got all sorts of variation to the scales, again, becoming finer the further down you go. Again, super smooth transition to the brown of the underside. You've got that armored look here, again, moving along the top of the Allosaurus, continuing to have that light blue shining through. You've also got an area of midsection articulation which obviously you can go left, right, actually go really far to the point where you disconnect the stomach, but you can, again, basically put the Allosaurus in whatever pose you would like. It is super articulated, and when it comes to how smooth the ability is to kind of move that area, it, again, is probably one of the best that I think I've ever seen when it comes to articulated figures and that midsection articulation. Moving back into the hip region, you can kind of make out the hip a little bit there. You can also see that, of course, the leg articulates. And uh, let me go ahead and grab it in the hip section there, or the, I should say in the back. And again, give us a chance to actually look at the articulation, obviously, forward and back. That leg can go super high if you wanted to. It can also go super far back. Probably could completely go upside down if I really wanted to get it to that position. And also, the leg can come out away from the body, so you can articulate it that way as well. Again, allowing tons and tons of posing possibilities. As you move down, you've got the knee, which is also extremely, extremely smooth. That can also swivel. And then you move down a little bit further. You've got some ankle articulation. Again, forward and back. And can kind of swivel, but the way that it's sculpted kind of prohibits it from completely swiveling. But the knee will swivel, allowing you to put the leg out to the side. Then you've got one more spot of articulation down here. I'm going to have to readjust again to grab that spot. And obviously you can go forward and back with that area and also swivel there as well. But moving down along the side of the thigh, you can see the muscle definition present but not overly defined. You can also see a little bit of like a rougher skin texture moving along the front of the thigh. Again, really smooth when it comes to the transitioning back to that brownish tone. And then you move down, you've got a really big calf muscle. You can see the knee in the front of the leg leading into the foot sculpt. That is an absolutely fantastic foot sculpt there and again man the detail on this is unreal and the actual print quality of this is easily some of the nicest I've ever seen like when it comes to crisp impressive detail I really don't know if I've ever seen better you can see again the scoots moving down the toes you have that lighter blue on the sides of the toes the nails again have a nice genuine sharp look to them and are again painted with that nice glossy black and you can see or I hope you can 
There is a dew cloth sculpted and painted, of course, on the figure. You've got the brown moving along the undersides of the feet. Again, even down here is expertly painted, perfectly highlighting all of the details when it comes to the scales in the feet. As you move out into the tail also, actually, before we get to that point, you can see you do have those larger ridges in, like, the hip region before they, again, kind of transition back down to a uh, kind of a smaller size. Definitely a little smaller, but still not small by any means. But leading out, you can see some really nice skin detail, again, with wrinkling and everything. And you can also see the scales as you lead out. You've got another area of articulation right here, another spot right here, another spot right here. Again, one right here, another one, another one, and then another one, and then one final spot right here. So that allows some incredible articulation in that tail. As you can see, it can completely go back around. You can also bend it, of course, the other way if you choose to. And of course, this also works going up and then down. Obviously, it'll take a minute to really straighten the tail out to make it look perfect, but you can articulate that tail in any direction you want. It is very, very, very articulated, and that obviously is why you have so many joints moving out. And I love how smooth it is, even though you have so many joints. They're not quite as obvious as you might see on some other articulated figures. He's done a very good job of hiding the joints moving through. But as you lead out, you can see that the armored look kind of starts to taper off a little bit and becomes kind of only like a few different rows moving along the top as we lead out toward the tip of the tail and then as you move along the underside you can see again the detail down here looks just as gorgeous as it does on the upper side of the allosaurus and then as we turn it around for the most part everything's going to look the same over here as it did on the first side except for of course the face and the way that it looks different with the eye not being blind and the lack of scars and stuff but that is far and away one of if not the absolute best allosaurus i've ever seen definitely the best jurassic world allosaurus i've ever seen but if you want to take a look at the base you can see the base that is included with the allosaurus is very nicely sculpted you've got a really gorgeous honestly earthy area with a ton of detail and a ton of paintwork applied you've got all sorts of variations of lighter and darker shades of browns looks like we've got a wash and everything present all kinds of cracks and crevices through the course of our nice earth the area for the base and then of course in the center you can see a little hole and that is because you have a little peg that goes into it and then a little stand to put your allosaurus on to balance him out so as per usual when it comes to jurassic justin or caldera collectibles it is the total package now as far as a size goes for the allosaurus it is a doozy when it comes to a size no doubt about that trying to straighten the tail out the best i can but as far as a length goes from the snout to the tip of the tail, it is about 26 inches, maybe even closing in on 26 and a quarter or about 66 and a half centimeters. I actually, just to get the Allosaurus in screen, it's so big, I really had to push the Allosaurus back further away from me. So it was a little tough to actually reach all the way out there to get that measurement. But uh, hopefully, again, I got it as close as possible. And then for a height on the Allosaurus, I don't know if you'll have a perfect view of it from this position. You are looking at to the top of the crest, a little hair under 10 and a quarter inches or about 26 and a half centimeters. Now that is just in the position it's currently in. Obviously, you could stand the Allosaurus up way higher, way taller if you wanted to have a much higher and taller look. But for a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon in the Collect A, human being next to our Caldera Collectibles Allosaurus. And as you can see, the Allosaurus is massive next to every single figure that I have here. Then for a few random Mattel comparisons, we've got a Mattel Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus, which are very clearly a lot smaller. And then a comparison that I know some people would definitely want to see, though it's a little hard to really actually get it completely in screen here. As you can see, we kind of are now extending out past my review area, but we have the Hammond Collection T-Rex, the custom version that I had created next to the Allosaurus and... Uh, the Allosaurus honestly might be a little bit longer than the T-Rex, though Mattel's, uh, you know, proportions and everything weren't all that great when the T-Rex was made. So maybe if they made a newer one, it would probably be a little bit more correct as far as the size goes. But obviously you can see the Allosaurus is still super, super impressive next to that T-Rex. And then just to kind of go up above to show you the 
Allosaurus and T-Rex next to each other, you can get a pretty good idea, I think, as far as the size goes and how they size up next to each other from up above. And then when it comes to a size comparison next to one of Mattel's more recent Allosaurus offerings, you can very clearly see yet again the Jurassic Justin version is so much bigger than any Mattel Allosaurus. Well, minus the uh, super colossal version anyway. And then when it comes to one final comparison, and honestly, I'm at a little bit of a loss as far as what to compare with this Allosaurus because it is so darn big, but here is an extreme damage T-Rex, AKA the extreme chomping T-Rex from Mattel, again, which is clearly much smaller. And surprise, I actually have something really cool to show you guys because what you can see here standing next to this Allosaurus is actually also from Jurassic Justin as he is going to be releasing this larger version which is the 118th scale Allosaurus in 132nd scale as well. So that's what you see standing here next to the larger version. Now these two Allosaurus are exactly the same as far as the sculpt, exactly the same as far as the paint. Obviously the only difference really here is is the fact that the 132nd version is a lot smaller and would fetch a cheaper price tag, I believe. Now, don't quote me on this, but I think the 132nd scale version will be around the $200 range, and obviously the 118th scale version is at $300 the last I heard. So you can, again, grab yourself this Allosaurus in either of those two size ranges. Now, the only other question I think you guys might be asking is whether or not the Allosaurus can stand on its own. As you can see, I do have it standing right now, and uh, even though it kind of looks like it, the tail's actually not touching, but the Allosaurus, due to it being so large and having such smooth articulation, uh, it does tend to kind of like crumble in the legs, which you can see, but that's exactly what the stand is for. So once you put it on the stand, obviously it stays up perfectly, but that also allows you to create all sorts of very cool kind of crazy poses that you can put your Allosaurus in and display it. Obviously right now it's just kind of floating on through as it, I guess, kind of runs by. But uh, again, the inclusion of the base with the stand is definitely a great idea on the part of Jurassic Justin and works so nicely here with the figure. So with that a doubt, this is far and away one of the best Allosaurus I have ever seen and definitely the best when it comes to a Jurassic World style Allosaurus I've ever seen. The sculpt is exceptional in every way. It's probably one of maybe the most impressive sculpt I've seen in person as far as how good the actual print quality is and how good the detail pops. It is honestly like unbelievable to look at the Allosaurus and see how good the detail looks on the figure, how crisp it is. Jurassic Justin and his quality is honestly off the charts. It's out of this world how good the actual sculpt and detail looks on this. Obviously, Jurassic Justin put a whole lot of time and effort into the sculpting of this figure. Clearly, he poured his heart into this, and it definitely shows on the final product and is also... Again, probably the most screen accurate when it comes to an Allosaurus that I've seen. Like, it definitely captures everything and anything that you would want to see on a Jurassic World style Allosaurus. On top of that, the paintwork is fantastic on this. Like, he is so good at giving his figures really, really high quality paint jobs, looking as professional and as impressive as it could possibly get. He's done a perfect job of highlighting every scale on the body from head to tail everything is painted so perfectly and so precisely you can just see that again just like with the sculpt he puts a lot of love and care into his products to make sure that what you get is of the highest quality possible you can without question see that through the entire Allosaurus. On top of that, you've got tons of articulation. Again, being super articulated, it features articulation in every area of the figure, and it's also extremely smooth. One of the advantages of having that wire articulation means you can move it a lot easier than you could if it were like ball joints and stuff like that. Like There's just a lot more that you can do as far as the way you can bend the figure. So the wire articulation is very useful when it comes to posing the Allosaurus, and again, giving this a mountain of articulation and then of course you also have a stand and a base which looks great with the allosaurus and helps to complete the entire scene and display so if you are interested
interested in grabbing this and of course grabbing that 132nd scale version i will include a link in the description to the etsy shop of jurassic justin i don't know for sure if the 132nd scale versions are up yet but i know obviously the 118th scale versions are up for pre-order so make sure you check the links that i will include in the description where you can check out the etsy shop pre-order yourself one of these allosaurus like i said earlier in the video make sure you use one of those methods that i was mentioning if you uh you know want one but you don't have the money right now uh, again a firm or things like that you know paypal pay and for things like that are really helpful when it comes to ordering stuff like this so make sure check those links definitely pick this one up and of course like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching